Hi, my name is Kevin from Wood Green Junkie, and I want to talk about the router sled kits that I offer. They are made specifically for the most popular trim routers like DeWalt, Milwaukee, Makita, and others. I'll also show you how simple it is to assemble using either of the kits I offer. So, if you already purchased a kit or if you're considering purchasing one of them, sit back and I'll show you the differences and everything you'll need to complete your sled. Just a quick backstory. I primarily work on cutting boards and charcuterie boards that typically don't exceed 15 by 24 inches. That, and the fact that I have a small shop, means I need a router sled that is compact and something I can tuck away under my assembly table when I'm not using it. I also wanted to use my trim router instead of a full-size router, again, because I want something fast and simple. And if you're curious about it being underpowered, it's no different from using a trim router on a tabletop CNC machine. Let me show you the two kits I offer. First is the starter kit. This kit offers the acrylic parts and hardware needed to assemble the bearing blocks and the shaft or rod support brackets. And for reference, I'll be using shaft and rod interchangeably. It comes with a 3 8 inch thick cast acrylic base for your trim router and two 4 inch grips so you get a good handle on your sled. It also comes with four quarter inch thick cast acrylic plates needed to attach the rod supports to the x-axis bearings. You'll see those in a bit. Lastly, you'll get the hardware needed to put all the pieces together. Next is the essentials kit. This kit includes everything in the starter kit, plus four linear motion ball bearings and four rod support brackets. You'll see how all of this comes together shortly. Just very important to keep in mind, if you purchase the starter kit, you'll need to purchase your own bearings and shaft support brackets. Now let's talk about what's not included in either kit. These are items you'll need to purchase from Amazon or other suppliers. The reason I currently don't include them in the kit is because everyone has their own specs as far as length and cut capacity. I also don't have the space to house all the rail and rod inventory for all the different lengths. You'll need to purchase an SBR16 rail set at your desired length. These sets typically include your two X-axis rails and four SBR16UU linear motion bearing blocks. Also needed is a set of 16 millimeter rods or shafts at your desired length. These are the rods your sled slides on in the Y-axis. Then the optional part, but highly recommended, are the 16 millimeter shaft collars to keep your sled from going off the rails, so to speak. If you didn't write all that down, it's okay. I'll put a link to my website, which has all of this information. And these are all the parts you'll need in order to set up your trim router sled. Again, all this information will be on my website, which I'll link in the description. As far as mounting options, you can screw down the rails directly onto your workbench, or you can create a simple router sled base that you can move around and put away like I did. In my case, I added a half inch layer to raise my boards, since I typically flatten boards that are roughly one inch thick. You can also add plywood risers to your rails if you're flattening thicker boards. Let's start putting the sled together. First, gather your SK16 rod supports and quarter inch plates and assemble them using the flathead screws and bolts. You'll need a 3mm hex bit or allen wrench to tighten them. Try to align them as best you can, since you won't have easy access to adjust them once you attach them to the bearing blocks. You can also use some Loctite to keep the screws from loosening over time. Once you have all four assembled, you can begin screwing them to your X-axis bearing blocks. Your kit includes 32 button head screws. Use 16 of them for this step. Use the 3mm hex bit to drive in the screws, but back them off slightly so there's some play with the support assembly. Attach all four the same way. You'll see in a minute why we want some wiggle.
Now we'll attach the bearings to the router plate. Use the remaining 16 button head screws to attach them, also leaving them slightly loose. Insert both rods through the bearings. This will align two bearing blocks to their individual rod. Tighten only one side for now. Using a tape measure and some patience, measure the distance between the rods at both ends and slightly tighten a couple screws to hold it in place. Measure again to make sure you have the same distance, and once you do, tighten all the remaining screws. And now would be a good time to attach your router base to the acrylic base plate. Once you attach the sled assembly to the rails, it will be difficult to access all the screws at the bottom of the base plate. Not impossible, just very difficult. Next, insert the rods back through the bearings and into the support brackets. You may have to loosen the screw on the side of the support bracket if the rods won't slide through easily. Measure about half inch to an inch on the exit side and tighten the support bracket screw. Do the same on the other bracket on the same side. The opposite ends get the leftovers, but tighten those screws as well. Your sled should move freely on the y-axis, but you'll notice some wobble. Now that the rods are parallel to each other, we can move the assembly to the end and begin tightening the rest of the screws as you hold the assembly against the end. This is where the shaft collars come in handy. Now, your sled should move freely in all directions. Next, you can attach the handles and you don't need a tool to tighten them. You can hold the screw in place with your finger and use the friction to tighten the handle. Just don't over tighten. and this trim router sled is coming together nicely. Now would be a good time to attach the other shaft collars. You don't want your sled assembly to fall off the rails with a flattening bit spinning at 18,000 RPMs. And now you have fully assembled your trim router sled. Let's see what it can do. I wanted a quick way to attach boards without having to use double-sided tape or clamps that would get in the way, so I decided to use bench dogs and bench dog clamps. I drilled out holes using a Forstner bit to accommodate most of the board sizes I feel I'll be flattening.
I typically mark my walnut with a white lead pencil so I know if I missed any spots and need to go back and take another pass. Lower your bit to the highest point of your board, then move your sled off the material and lower it about a sixteenth of an inch more. Here I'm taking about a sixteenth off for my first pass. I'm cutting across the grain but you get cleaner results cutting with the grain which you'll see in a minute. If you plan on sanding, which I hope you do, those light cut lines will sand right off. You'll also notice I'm only cutting in one direction instead of back and forth. That's because I only want chips flying in one direction, which makes cleanup a lot easier. But you can definitely cut in both back and forth directions. Now I'm cutting with the grain, which leaves a cleaner cut. I'm also cutting right to left, which sends the chips away from me. It's difficult to see and appreciate on the video, but this board is dead flat. Now let me talk about the elephant in the room, dust collection. I decided not to incorporate a dust chute for two main reasons. One, I wanted to keep the setup as simple and compact as possible and keep the cost down as well. Two. Dust collection is so tricky and a lot of the chips would escape regardless of adding a dust chute. I think a brush skirt around the perimeter would help contain the chips and that is something I will look into for version 2.0 but for now it just made more sense to take literally one minute to clean up the mess with my shop vac. The other option would be adding a long dust hood along the back edge if you know you'll be cutting in that direction. This is also something I'll be looking into to help with dust collection. And that's it. I hope this video helped you put together your trim router sled or help answer some questions you might have had as you consider purchasing the starter or essentials kit. I truly want to help the woodworker or DIYer who's limited on space in their shop and also doesn't have access to a planer or CNC machine. And honestly, you can find and purchase all of these parts on Amazon and make your mounting plates out of plywood. But I think you'll be very satisfied buying a kit from Wood Green Junkie and not have to hunt down all the components yourself. Definitely check out my website for all of the information and feel free to email me if you still have any questions. I'm more than happy to help. Hope to see you all on the next video.